All right, Dr. Gregor. Yes. Hey, so I'm Joe, aka Red Pill Vegan, on YouTube. Oh, hey, I know your uh, comments. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All, right, all right, cool. So um, the question I'm going to ask you today is about DHA. Yeah, what's DHA? Oh, yeah. Okay. Long chain yeah, omega yeah, 3 yeah. fatty yeah, acids. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what we've seen in the research recently is it appears there may be some risk for men with prostate cancer in some recent research with taking supplemental DHA. And so Dr. Michael Clapper recently published a video about that and said he's going to stop recommending it. I was just curious, have you seen that research yet or is it something Hand that's it on over. your radar? Hand it over. Okay. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm open. So at the t Always. Currently, you're still saying it's optional but not necessary for DHA I think for healthy individuals? I, I, I recommend people consider it. Okay. I take it myself. Recommend people consider it. Um, uh, but if people are randomized to DHA and the prostate cancer gets worse, I would stop uh, recommending it. So it looks like from the research that I've seen from Michael Clapper's newest video yeah. is it's only a small subset of men that when it, it what happens, I think the, the long chain omega-3 fatty acids saturate the prostate no, but, when I taken mean, in a supplemental well, form. But presumably they're taking fish oil. I mean, that's how most people take DHA. They okay. don't take some algae oil. Okay. So you're saying people take fish oil has more prostate cancer. That's not a shocker. Not a surprise, I mean, yeah. I mean, particularly because you can't get, you can just get some of the um, lighter pollutants to d distill off. But even distilled, uh, steam distilled fish oil can be packed with pollutants. Okay. And so, I mean, that wouldn't surprise me at all. So if the re if I gotta see the I gotta see the study. If the research is specifically on algae-based DHA, yeah. would that be if there was an increased risk of prostate cancer, would it be enough for you to change your recommendation? Well, it depends. So it was an observational study. I don't know. I haven't seen it myself. So presumably it was. Yeah. And so then you'd worry about two things: confounding factors and then reverse causation. Yeah. Right. So yep. Just can't prove cause and effect, but let's check it out. Yeah. Let's see it. All right. I'll send you a link to it on your channel, man. I'd love that. Thank you, Dr. Appreciate Gregor. You. Awesome. Thanks for coming. You too, man. Thanks so much. Keep watching and let's dive into the research so we can bring this all together. The video I'm referencing in this interview is in regards to Dr. Michael Clapper changing his recommendations for DHA supplements and can be found on VegSource. First, let me just say that I think Dr. Greger and Dr. Clapper and Jeff Nelson over at VegSource are all men of integrity who pride themselves on being thorough and cautious when it comes to your health and the recommendations they make. Now, one of Dr. Greger's conjectures is whether or not the associations between DHA and prostate cancer were seen in people who consumed the algae form of DHA as compared to getting it from fish or fish oil. In the video live, I mistakenly assumed that Dr. Clapper's recommendations were based on new research specifically focusing on algae-based DHA and other supplements like preformed DHA, maybe even fish oil. So we are going to look at the references provided and you can come closer to making your own decision. In the first study, you can see they actually point out how very few of the participants took fish oil supplements and the majority got their omega-3s from actually eating fish. That's one of Dr. Greger's conjectures when I went up to him and confronted him live about this. Then about two years later, a larger study confirmed these associations. But once again, we're talking about people eating fish and or consuming fish oil, not omega-3 DHA algae-derived supplementation, just for the record. Next, the next paper talks about a systematic review of epidemiological studies, but brings to light several other studies which do in fact show associations between DHA and EPA and prostate cancer. Lastly, a meta-analysis concludes that there was no strong evidence that circulating fatty acids are an important predictor of prostate cancer. And while acknowledging the associations we are concerned about in this video, this meta-analysis was unable to conclude causation. You see, this type of study, this type of meta-analysis, may not have the power to conclude causation, especially when it's based on observational studies. If you want my opinion, I think Dr. Clapper is exercising extreme caution based on a first-hand experience with a family member battling prostate cancer. You know what? I, I respect that. 
I think Dr. Greger got caught up in all of this because of an ongoing personal dispute between Jeff Nelson and Dr. Joel Furman, which I believe is rooted in the fact that Dr. Furman hasn't been paying respect to some of the straight-up originators in this plant-based community. And this pissed off Jeff, Jeff Nelson, who decided to take it straight to his kitchen. Now, Dr. Greger knows that his recommendations can, in fact, be defended from the perspective of the risk of prostate cancer because the science on omega-3 supplementation is pretty weak to begin with, as Jeff Nelson has pointed out, and isolating it down even further to just vegans taking algae-based DHA supplements rather than just the risks associated with fish or fish oil is much more limited in a way that makes it difficult to disqualify or debunk his recommendations. And at the end of the day, we're talking primarily about observational studies. You don't think Dr. Greger knew these studies? We're talking about the guy who reads every study. Come on, y'all. I watched Clapper's video one time and popped this question on him cold. In his defense, was pretty tight. Now if we step back for a moment, we're arguing about supplements on a very similar plant-based diet program. It's time to move on from this frame of a deficiency mindset when all of us are promoting diets that reverse chronic disease. Guys, abundance mindset. Letting go of the story after it's aired. There's always going to be people who want to take a supplement to fill a void inside of themselves. You can't change the psychology of the marketplace and the people that make it. That's why I say next on every video. Because I'm driven forward relentlessly. Because we have bigger problems than algae oil. We got keto people claiming they can reverse heart disease. We've got leaders in the low-carb community denying that plant-based diets can reverse type 2 diabetes. We are facing the prospect of the 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, including the keto diet as a specific recommendation for keeping blood sugar low. Hmm. Y'all really need to watch some of my videos if you don't already know what time it is. Click one of the thumbnails that pops up during the outro to check out these stories. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more highlights and information about the changing dietary guidelines in 2020, an exclusive analysis you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. And make sure to hit that notification bell too so you don't miss the next video. Y'all know what time it is. Red Pill Vegan, next.